In this video, I'm going to show you how you can hook up a mining rig or really any Linux machine for that matter to a VPS using a WireGuard VPN tunnel. Now, I have a unique situation in that uh, post uh, Helene, there was essentially some infrastructure changes done with my ISP in the complex I live in. And I'm basically in a double NAT situation now. So we can map that out real quick and just kind of show you guys uh, what I'm dealing with. So essentially I have my ISP and then I've got a complex uh, mesh setup. And then off of that mesh setup, I have a uh, basically a uh, my own personal router. And then obviously my machines behind that. So... What I end up with is I end up with a double NAT situation where there's basically a router at the complex and then I have an additional router within my unit that is my own personal router. And unfortunately, I don't have control over the one at the complex level. And then we basically have like a shared ISP connection coming into that mesh network. So what that means is I am unable to port forward anything now. So I did have to go through shut down all my nodes when this happened, and then I was trying to figure out, is there a way I can run nodes? Well, there is. You can, basically what I'm doing is I am renting uh, a few VPSs, very low end uh, VPSs, and I'm setting up a WireGuard VPN server through those, and I am using that to route both inbound and outbound traffic to my node boxes. So I've got five node boxes, they're all mini PCs, and today we're actually going to be setting up uh, the fifth one so that I can show you how a VPN connection can be established from a rented VPS service all the way down to, uh, in my case, I'm running this in HiveOS, but this can really be on any operating system. It doesn't really matter. And so just to map out kind of what the end goal is here, we've got inbound traffic and we've got outbound traffic. So in a typical uh, inbound traffic scenario, what we're looking for is we've got basically a end user is going to want to connect to us. So let's say uh, they're going to use port 80 as an example. We want to have our VPS listen to that port and then it's going to take that and it's going to forward that to our mining machine. Uh, so for me, like uh, zero one core uses port 10,000. So if we take basically this port 80, replace it with a port 10,000, we're going to forward that to the mining machine um, on port 10,000 as well. So essentially what we can do is we can run our node on our local network, our machine. It's always going to be connected to the VPN server. It'll get a uh, kind of a dedicated IP, a VPN IP. And we're going to basically be leveraging WireGuard here and also Nginx as a reverse proxy. So we're not going to be running our web server per se, but we're actually going to be using this as a proxy to do basically the forwarding. And then WireGuard is going to establish that VPN connection. And if we go on the machine that is running basically our mining machine here, we're going to have a public IP address of whatever that VPS is. And so the way the outbound traffic will work, uh, outbound super simple, because there's that VPN connection established and there'll be a default routing rule set up, basically anytime we go from our mining machine to try to go out over the internet, it will basically go to the internet to our VPS. And then from our VPS, that will actually go out to the destination internet traffic. So this VPN tunnel will be established here, but all traffic will get sent through the VPS. So both inbound and outbound traffic will all look like it's coming from that VPS. So it may sound complicated. It's actually super simple to set up. So I'm already over on, I've got a VPS on Contabo that I'm using for testing purposes in this video. And we've got a base image of Ubuntu 22.04. I'm going to go ahead and we're going to log into this machine using PuTTY. And if we just do a curl ifconfig.me, let's just double check. That is our public IP here. 
And then if we, let's go ahead and do a shell to our system that we're going to be running this on. Uh, so if we do a curl ifconfig.me, we can see this is currently my complex's uh, public IP. So what we're going to do is we are going to install something called PyVPN. Now this makes it super easy to get WireGuard set up and running. And if you head on over to pyvpn.io, they give you the one line command you can run. You're basically going to run this. And what this is, is this is, was originally intended to be run on Raspberry Pis, but you can run it on any Linux box. And it's a real simple install for WireGuard. It really does streamline the install. So we're going to go ahead and run this. We're just going to paste in this command. So that's going to be curl L. And that's going to HTTPS colon slash slash install.pyvpn.io uh, pipe bash. Go ahead and do this. This is going to run some app upgrades and run the installer script. And then we're going to get popped up with kind of like a CLI GUI. Okay. It's going to pop us in here. You can just hit enter. And then you can hit enter again. And then it's going to say, do we want to force routing IPv6 to block the leakage? I just say yes here. And then hit oh, hit enter again for OK. And then it's going to ask us to select a local user. Hit OK. If you don't have one, which I currently don't have one, you can go ahead and create one. I'm just going to call this user. Hit tab, enter. And then it's going to make us pick a password for that user account. So do that. And then it's going to ask us to select the user. Just hit tab and hit OK. And then it's going to ask us, do we want WireGuard or VPN? We want WireGuard, so just hit tab, hit OK. And then we're going to get the screen. This is the port that WireGuard VPN tunnel is going to listen on. And this is what your clients are going to connect to. I just leave this as the default, but if you want to use a different port, you can. Hit tab and enter. And then hit enter again to confirm the settings. Now you can pick the DNS server you want to use. So we can scroll down. You can use Google if you want. You can use Cloudflare. Doesn't really matter. I'm just going to pick Google in this scenario. Hit tab, hit OK. And then here it's going to ask us to confirm the public IP. That is our public IP. So we're going to hit tab, hit OK. And then we're going to hit enter again. This is going to generate the private keys on the server. And after about a minute, it should restart some services, pop you back up in here. Go ahead and hit OK. And then this is going to ask if you want unattended upgrades of the security patches. I always say yes here, but this is up to you. If you don't want the system to auto apply uh, upgrades of any security patches, you can say no here. But I definitely always say yes. That way we're not running behind on security patches. And then it's going to pop up and it's basically going to tell you anytime you need to add a client profile, you can just do PyVPN space add. And then we hit enter to say OK. And that's going to say, it strongly recommends you reboot after installation. Do you want to reboot? We're going to say yes. And we're going to say OK. This is going to reboot the VPS server. So if you have other services running on it, be aware that this is going to reboot it when you hit enter there. And uh, basically, we're just going to let that reboot, start up the WireGuard services, and reconnect to it. So let's see if it has rebooted. Okay, it's back up. So we're going to go ahead and log back in again. And now we can run. Go ahead and... Now we can run pyvpn space add. And that's going to ask us for a name for the client. And it's basically going to give us a config file that we can copy and paste on the client side for each profile. So typically I name these the same as whatever my mining machines are or my node boxes. Uh, but for this case, I'm just going to call this demo because we won't actually be saving this. We will, after this video, we'll be reformatting this because essentially you're going to be able to see the private keys for the system. So now it has created that. In order to see what that config is, we can just do a nano slash home slash user. Users what we name the user account to store the configs in during that setup screen uh, slash configs 
and then slash demo.conf. So this is gonna be the file that it created. And this is gonna contain the interface connection and also the peer connection. And this is really the WireGuard client config that you can just copy and paste directly onto your client system. So now we've got the server up and running, WireGuard's running. Now, if you do have a VPS, so I'm using Contabo, which they don't have like a front end firewall blocking ports. Everything's kind of open to the VPS. But if you do have a firewall or if you're, if you're running something like in Ionos or Oracle, and they run their own firewall. You have to log into your VPS dashboard and make sure you allow port through. Uh, so what that's going to look like is the port that you selected during the install. So for us, it was 51820. You need to allow UDP traffic on that port. So just keep that in mind. Now, if we hop on over to our client machine, uh, one thing that you have to make sure, if you're doing this in Hive OS, you have to be on 22.04. Uh, I am currently on 22.04, but if you're not, you need to do the beta uh, version that has 22.04 version of Ubuntu. Uh, this is the only version of Hive OS that supports WireGuard connections. Um, so just keep that in mind. Uh, we're going to say zero because we already have that installed. And if we take a look up here, uh, where's it at? We can see we're running 22.04. So we are good there. Now what you want to do is you want to run an apt update. Dash Y here. And so update the repositories. And then we're going to do an apt install WireGuard space and IP tables. Oops. And we're going to go ahead and do this. This is going to install the WireGuard daemon that will allow it to auto connect to our WireGuard server and persist that on boot up. And then also IP tables, which is used for the routing. It's not installed by default in Hive OS. And then uh, because of the beta version, what we have to do is we have to set up an alternative. So to do that, we're going to do update hyphen alternatives space dash dash set IP tables and we have to map this to user s bin uh, IP table oops IP tables legacy so we go ahead and do this now when you run the IP tables command it will point to legacy again this is uh, with high of 2204 you might have to do this on 2204 I uh, Ubuntu, I'm not 100% sure on that one. Uh, the easiest way to test that is if you run IP tables and it doesn't work or it gives you uh, an error saying you have to run legacy mode, then you'll have to do that update alternatives. Okay, so now what we want to do is we want to create our config file. So we're going to do uh, nano slash etc slash wireguard slash wg0.conf. And then we're going to hop back on over to our VPS. And we're going to copy and paste this whole block in the here. And then we want to add a line at the bottom that is uh, persistent keep alive. And we're going to set that to 25. And then in HiveOS, HiveOS does not support IPv6. So on these allowed IPs, this is an IPv6. And if you have a comma after the address up here, if your VPS has an IPv6, it'll show here. You'll want to remove that. So we're just going to remove everything from the comma afterwards. And then uh, this will be how it will connect. So this is the WireGuard server. And then these are the pri private and public keys needed to connect. And this is the IP address that is going to get established on this system to maintain that connection to the wire guard. So we're just going to do control X, Y, enter to save. Now, once again, if we do curl ifconfig.me, 
we can see that we're still on our home uh, IP address. And now if we do a sudo systemctl enable wg hyphen quick at wg0.service, that will create the service for establishing the WireGuard connection using the config file we just created. And then if we do a sudo systemctl daemon reload, and then if we do a start wg hyphen quick at wg0, go ahead and hit enter. Now if we do a curl ifconfig.me, we can see our public IP is now the public IP of the VPS server. So at this point, we've established a two-way tunnel from the VPS down to this machine and from this machine out to the VPS. Now, for testing purposes, I'm just going to install a web server on here so that we can make sure that the we can get the routing working from the VPS down to this system. So to do that, I'm going to just do a uh, apt install of nginx, hit y. We're going to let this install. And this may, if you're running HiveOS, this may fail to start up. Not a big deal there. We're going to do a nano slash etc slash njinx, ngix, and then nginx.conf. And for now, we're going to leave all of this enabled. Uh, but what we want to do is we want to grab this path. This is where our actual websites live. So we're going to paste that in and we're going to do a nano space etc space nginx slash sites enabled slash default. Hit enter. And the reason this fails on startup is you can see by default it has IPv6, which HiveOS does not support. You just put a pound here to comment out that line. And I'm going to run this on port 81. Control X, Y, enter to save. Now, if we do a uh, sudo system CTL restart nginx, and if we do an IPA, we can see that our Ethernet connection is 192.168.1.146. And our WireGuard connection is at 10.59.138.2. Uh, but what we should see is now if we grab this IP address, we open a new tab and we go to port 81, we now have a web server running. And what I'm going to do just for simplicity here, I'm going to do, um, it's webbar www.html index. All right, so I'm going to say, Welcome to Nginx from Mini 5, just so that we can confirm that the public traffic will be working. So this is traffic over our local network to that Mini PC. Now we want to try to get the same traffic flowing over the internet from the VPS. So to do that, we're going to do actually a similar step here in that we're going to hop back on over to the VPS. We can close out that file. And we're go going to install nginx again, except this time on the VPS. But this time, instead of running it as a web server, we're actually going to be running it as a proxy server. So to do that, we're going to do nano etc uh, nginx, uh, and then the nginx com file. And under this HTTP section, we're actually going to comment out all these lines because we don't need these. Uh, if you want to run a web server on top of the proxy, you can. Uh, but typically, I do not do that. Oops. So let's go ahead and let's give these a quick comment. You can also delete the lines, but I like to leave them in there just in case I decide to use them later. And now we're going to add a new block. So this is going to be stream. And then we're going to have open curly brace and then closing curly brace. And then within stream, we're going to have a server block. And once again, open curly brace, close curly brace. Every port that you want to forward needs to be in its own server block here. 
So then what we're going to do is we're going to say listen. And we're going to do 0.0.0.0 .0 .0 colon whatever port we want to listen on. Uh, for me, I'm going to do 81. Make sure you put a semicolon at the end. Very important. And then we're going to do proxy underscore pass. This is basically going to do a proxy pass through of whatever hits this port on this server um, is going to pass to basically we're going to put an IP address in here and it's going to go port 81. And to get that IP address, we can simply hop back on over to here and let's grab the VPN IP, which was this, the 10.59.138.2. So if we grab that and we put that in here in front of the colon. And once we save and exit this, any traffic that is received on port 81 on our VPS's public IP should auto route to port 81 on our mini 5 PC. What's, so what should happen is if I go to the public IP colon 81 in a web browser, it should serve up that web server that we just spun up on the system within our local network that is behind that double NAT. So we're going to test this. We're going to do control X, Y, enter to save. And we're going to do a sudo restart, or sorry, sudo system ctl restart nginx. It's going to restart it. Now we're just going to verify our IP here. So now if we grab this IP address, hop on over here, and if we put that in, colon 81. There you can see. So we're hitting that public IP address and it is now routing that to the mini five PC. Um, similar, if we go to, uh, if I go to like an open port checker and if we check port 81 on my local network or sorry, over the internet, over my public IP, it's gonna be blocked because of that double NAT situation. But if I put in the VPS IP to check, you can see it is open. So everything is working now. Um, all the traffic will flow from the VPS down to the system. The responses will flow back through. So in every scenario, it's going to look like the IP came from the VPS IP. Uh, and then you can take the same approach. If you're spinning up any type of master nodes, you can basically on that VPS, all you have to do is uh, if we bring up that um, nano etc nginx config, come down here, um, we can just add another line that says server, open curly brace, close that curly brace. And then we can do listen 0.0.0. .0. If we were going to do like a 0, 01 core, uh, a Zoc node, we would do 10,000 here. And then we do proxy pass of 10.59.138.2 colon 10,000. <clears> and another thing that you can do is you're not limited to just one system. So you could have you have one VPS, you could have a bunch of systems that are using that VPS. So for me, I actually use this for storage uh, to run a storage provider on all my mining machines. I basically point all my mining machines to one server and then I use an alternate port for that. So what I'm able to do here for those scenarios, I'm able to do server. And then if we do listen 0.0.0.0, if I do like 29001, I can do a proxy pass of uh, 10.59.128.2, and I believe it's 28967 is the port number. Uh, I can take this and then instead of having to rent a VPS for every storage provider, I could do something like this where I say, all right, my my first mining rig, I want it to use port 29001. My second mining rig, I want it to use port 29002. And this would be like a three because it would be an additional client. 
And then same thing with this one, this would be three. And this would have an, a client of four. And then, uh, so you can see with this, you could basically spend, so with the VPSs that I rent, I they're $2 a month. Um, you don't need a lot of resources on the VPS itself because it's really just doing traffic management for you. Uh, you're not really running any other services on it. So for me, I basically route everything through the same VPS for storage. Now, if you're running master nodes and you want to run the same coin, uh, typically those are restricted to one per IP. But storage, you can run an unlimited amount behind the same IP if you want to. So this is how you could accomplish that as well. Just remember, whenever you add lines in here, you need to do control X, Y, enter to save, and then you have to restart the proxy service. Uh, so if we just do control X, Y, enter, and then just make sure that whenever you do that, you do do the restart for it to pick up the new config. And if for some reason there's an issue in the config, it will fail to load, it will give you that message. So you can come back here, take a look, and let's just see uh, what we messed up here. <clears throat> and here you can see when I did that second one, the port 10,000, I actually did the wrong name on proxy. It's proxy pass, I spelled it wrong. Do control X, Y, enter, do a restart. Or you can see it is restarted. And now that is handling any of that traffic. Again, it's only gonna have these ports open on the server. So it's only gonna be listening for traffic on those ports. And based on that port, it's gonna route it to any of the servers that are, or in our case, any of the mini PCs that are connected to it. That's all there is to get the WireGuard connection up and running. And it is running as a service at this point. So anytime your mini PC reboots, anything like that, it'll automatically reestablish that connection to the WireGuard VPN service uh, on restart.